of, for this current year. Um, there's obviously a race for the governor's office, depending on who wins, it could have a pretty big influence on whether the state continues to support the GIC financially. If they don't, there will be substantial changes in both rates and probably offerings. Um, and even with the $100 million revelation, there's very likely to be plan design changes and price changes next July 1st. One of the issues with joining the GIC, not that we absolutely won't, but um, we will have no idea what we're signing up for on December 1st. We'll know no more than we know right now today. So it'll have to, in my opinion, be a pretty strong probable savings, you know, from all the RFP results for that to be a good choice. And then if that's not selected, we'll meet on December 4th and, and do our best to select the GIC, non-GIC plan. That, that could also entail a second meeting, so it's not that I would necessarily know for your first meeting in December, which is just after that. But that gives you an idea. This is obviously a pretty big deal for the cost side of our budget. And the nice thing is, th this is a real tough time frame for some of the insurance carriers to meet. The bad part is, hopefully it doesn't cost us a lot to get bids early. The good part is, for both of our budget processes, we'll know. Um, here's a little discussion quickly about energy prices and the pipeline Sorry, capacity. Sorry, can go back just a little? I'm just yeah. trying to understand on the uh, health care stuff. So with an RFP, are you sort of modeling what you're looking for? What kind of um, yeah, variables? We, we've yeah, asked, we've asked for a plan that would look like the one we have. Every, first of all, every That's insurance it. carrier knows everything about everyone. Yeah. So we've sent out all kinds of demographic data, statistical data, they all have that available. Um, We've asked them specifically for a couple of plan designs, one that's pretty much what we have and then some other options that would save money. Mm -hmm. So if they can offer all those, they'll respond. Maybe some of them can't. They'll at least offer what the closest they can to what we have now. They can't all match exactly. And then they'll, there, there's then a they section that says if you, have any, if you have any, create, there's a couple others and then there's a section if you have any creative ideas of ways we could reduce what you just showed us, let us know. What we're finding, in, especially in the last year, is that all the gimmicks and tricks from a few years ago about, you know, if you just change your operating room co-payment, or ER co-payment rather, from 50 to 100, let's say, you save a quarter of a percent. That's pretty much all out the window because it's so uncertain in the industry right now, no one knows what to price. You know, the actuaries are having a nightmare. Just follow Paul's point for a second, in yep. the plan designs, so, I'm assuming are they looking HMO as an option as well as PPO? We have both. Okay. And then what size deductibles are they looking at? Um, I don't have a list in my head. Uh, ours are higher than most by far. But the one thing we don't do is to have, um, I forget what the term is, but the first thousand bucks on you. Right. First 500 bucks is on you, whatever it is. We don't have plans like that. Maya doesn't offer those, but we've asked. Because that's really what all the company is going to the yeah. high deductibles. Yeah, and, I, then I, you, I know, I and then you get the healthcare savings account versus, right. I don't know if you have flexible savings account. We do. The healthcare savings account is so much more flexible. Yeah. And I don't know if like a public entity can say, here's your healthcare, and oh, by the way, we're going to start by putting a $800 in that. You know, that, that's account. something that would be negotiated, but okay. all those ideas are absolutely on the table. Yeah, because yeah. Because you're right, it is much more flexible now. It didn't used to be as interesting. That, that right, and when and when the more. company or the town can say, oh, by the way, we'll put we'll put the seed money in your healthcare savings account, then people don't feel so exposed for the yeah. deductible. And the high deductible versus low deductible, the huge premiums savings. are hugely different. Huge. Like yeah. More than if you just take 12 times the difference. I mean, you, you, how can it be? It doesn't make sense, but yeah. it is. That's the one thing we found that is a lever is that. Mm -hmm. All the other little tricks we used yeah. to have pretty much are worthless now. And so many companies are only offering that now, but financially, yeah. when you do the analysis, you realize at first you panic, and then you realize, okay, I do the analysis between what they give us, and yeah. it's very viable. Even Meyer realizes they have to go in that direction. This concept is very foreign to the public market for what that's worth. Mm -hmm. The public market doesn't usually lead the way on anything like it's this. Too bad. Yeah. So, but the private sector has clearly shown there's big savings. Some of the things we did years ago that seemed to be such a small change saved an enormous amount on a premium because it was meant to change behavior. So don't go to the emergency room when you have a cold. Mm -hmm. Well, we the high deductible 50, plan forces We went from 50 to 150, right. yeah. and maybe you go to the emergency or the, the ER for $50, but for 150, maybe you stay home. Right. So you go to CVS. 
Yeah. All right, let me give you a cold one more day before you go into the yeah. bathroom. Guess what you get back? Yeah. Yeah. Um, probably not the year we really need to do uh, I will say the school department is still evaluating this situation as well as energy costs, so you might see some changes uh, by the end of the month. Um, what does all this look like? Again, if we don't use any free cash in the next couple of years, your operating budgets would have to come down 2% and then crawl up that 0.8% in the second year. What if we use 1.7? And this is pretty much in line with the numbers we talked about when we were over at Coolidge. It's about 1% each year. Not much has really changed. And then lastly, what if we were targeting 3.5%, which has generally been what the operating budgets have been for the last three years? And I think both John and I would agree that doesn't always do all the things we want by any stretch. That's how much free cash should be used. And note, as is clear in the example, you'll be building the reliability on it, which is the hard part. You know, if, if in the third year you're kind of back to something that was normal, no big deal, you could do this. And if that's when the uh, override quote unquote happens, and you knew it was going to happen, you could do this. Kind of tough to do it otherwise, though. So this is the annual question. You know, we have a million dollar gap between our accommodated costs and our revenues. What do you do? Well, you know, I've been wrong for so long, I'm tired of being wrong. I'll just be quiet from now on. <laughs> yes, I hate that hat already. Um, you know, one option is to just lean on those revenues even more than Sharon just described to you. Since we don't always know the sources of the revenue, but something good always happens, right? And it, and it usually does. You know, 80% of the time, something good happens. Let's and we've got our rainy day account if do. it doesn't happen. So we do. But don't do both. <laughs> um, the, and the next part is um, the selectmen have a program called Reading 2020, and, and one of the strategic planning efforts um, that's been subject of six executive sessions so far is things that are going to lead to more revenues. So we'll talk about that when we can. It's not going to happen in the next year or two, though. It's designed to be long-term stuff. Um, and just as sort of some benchmarks, you know, if, if we were to uh, you know, land a, a big project in town, 70 million of new development only gets you, if you will, a million property taxes, plus we do get some one-time fees. But just to put that in perspective, a million bucks is 1.2%? Yep. yep. It's 2% um, on the operating budgets. Right, 2% on operating and then uh, Yeah, so yeah. that'd be great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but 70 million. Yeah, can you say that again? So 1 million is so on the operating So we've got a million in property 2%. taxes, that's 2%. We can go from where we are to where yeah. the 3 and a half is yeah. pretty easily. And I thought and this would be a good example of those of you that have been around a while, remember the old Johnson Hardware and then obviously the Atlantic. Um, that whole area has been redeveloped pretty significantly and that's only a quarter of a million. So it's not easy to get that million dollars. It's a nice idea though. And you know, obviously when you drive around, Reading doesn't have a whole lot of empty space. So a seventy million dollar project wouldn't be done in a year. Uh, no. And I'm only doing 70 because that's what the million was. Yes. I don't have anything in mind to say. Just to be clear. <laughs> I don't think that would be that much. Um, so, you know, if you want to increase revenues, here's some of the issues. Um, you know, what state are you going to do? I don't know. You know, this, we talked to the state reps and the senator when they were here last time. Um, this bottom line is pretty concerning. And that's why I asked him the question. Um, you know, the casino vote absolutely does have an influence over revenues, for, for better or worse, whether you like it or you don't. It just does. They'll be in a better position. Revenues are running good this year, slightly above their 5% projections, but it's way too early in the year to really make any sense of that. Um, so you just don't know what to do with state aid. I think putting in a plus 2.5 right now is pretty risky. After the election, if the casino vote is not repealed, I won't feel as bad about the two and a half, and it's hard, to, it's hard to get comfortable saying it should be higher since it's been a while since we had much. Yeah. I was just going to say, the other X factor with that is the Chapter 70 funding formula, yeah. but that's a year away, Okay. Um, from at least a year away from getting revised. Because mm -hmm. as I said, something that Senator Lewis... still in the committee? Yeah, it just started. The committee just started. Just started. Yeah. Okay. They're not supposed to report out until June. Okay. So right, so do the formulas really yeah. tweaked every year, too. They have these yeah. different levels. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, 
really like there's sort of a myth almost about the formula because exactly. it's not the same every year. But even the casino money probably wouldn't be available next year. Probably not. No. So they have but zero they in this year as an assumption, but they do have it in the next year. Right. I was a little surprised. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> um, prop ten, two and a half, ten and a half. That'd be the thing. <laughs> no problem. I don't think so. Imagine that job. <laughs> I look at other states' budgets sometimes, or other cities and towns, and I constantly see six, seven, and eight percent increases every year in the Midwest. It's just unbelievable. Uh, anyways, New York State. If you, you know, if you're aiming for an override, and you're going to do it every ten years, where well, first of all we're a couple years behind, and secondly, you don't want to have taxpayer burnout, so you're going to ask for a lot of money. It's going to sink and swim, but it's you know if you ask for four million or six million, I think the answer is the same. So you just got to ask mm -hmm. how much you use and how fast you use. That's different, you know, and that's something we can we can phase it in. We can have some kind of strategy of you know it's going to take a lot of communication. Uh, but the one thing that I'd like to see happen is if we do have a successful override, I think you should stop using free cash to balance the budgets. That should be part of the deal. If we keep coming in with another million dollars every year, we ought to be spending it on one-time costs. Because believe me, we can do that. Um, we can spend a million dollars on roads and you know, a lot of effort. See, I don't know that I agree with that. You don't know. Yeah, well, because <laughs> but if we, we keep showing that we're, you know, able to replenish and putting money back. Yeah. So it's working, and I just I can't imagine. And especially in the be beginning years is one thing, but towards the end of that tenure, uh, you, you yeah. usually don't have that luxury. The other thing is, and I won't speak for the schools, John can, but on the town side, um, we really, it's, it's kind of an obsession that we hate to spend money, and mm -hmm. it's not actually good for the mm -hmm. place. You saw how much we turned back, four or 500,000. Right. Yeah. You know, we have an, a lot of empty jobs, honestly. We're not putting out a better product because the jobs are empty. Mm -hmm. I can assure you of that. But we're so worried about, well, why hire someone and then have to lay someone off? And that's just constant fear. Now, that's no way to live. Maybe we should just not worry about it. So you really think that's how you're living and not filling a position because you think they're going to have to I, I guarantee you I'm leaving some positions open for that reason. Um, the position, the, um, we have a department head position open that I've been doing, which is ridiculous. Um, that's a job we have to fill and we will fill within the next year. But other positions that are empty will probably stay empty at least in, through the winter, when we have a better idea of what did health insurance look like, you know, what's going on. Um, we just have a hard time sort of spending money sometimes because we know this is a constant, always issue. Now, if an override happened and we suddenly assess the full six million, I'm not sure we'd be able to mentally change very much, but there's so many things that the town would like to do because we think the residents want them. It'd be interesting to try instead of always being in such a defensive position and saying, oh, right, we, can't we, do can't, we can't do it, we can't do it. in that do defensive it. position for We're taking 11 out. years. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but, but the other thought is that maybe what we want to do is, is kind of buckle down tight and then have kind of a kitty of funds that are used for both sustainable as well as one time projects that are high priorities to the overall taxpayers. Whatever yeah. that happens to be, and literally, they you know you set priorities. Maybe they, they get voted through, whatever. And those are the things that get the extra funding. And because otherwise, I, I don't I don't know where you really go. I mean, how do you, how do you well, start saying you know what you know you know should everybody get the same amount going up? You know, another no, issue so. that I've been wrestling with is in the past we've always had a lot of employees, very little non-employee wages or help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It'd be a lot more flexible if we had more right. contract help, exactly. seasonal help, whatever right. you want to call it. Um, and then when we have money, we can do things. When we don't have money, you know, we don't have unemployment and right. you know, we don't have benefit costs along the way. So maybe this, you know, I'm looking at a couple of areas where maybe that model is better. Mm -hmm. I don't know that John's going to have that same model. No, he has a whole different set of yeah. <laughs> optional fourth grade. <laughs> but, it, but it does give you more flexibility, the contracted. Yeah. I'll, I'll just give you an example. We have a relatively large engineering staff because in the long run, that's the cheapest way to do it. Um, we don't 
we, we spend money on the town side for a lot of capital projects on their wages. Other cities and towns spend one and a half times as much through capital to do the same work, which is the right model. Mm -hmm. if, if you're really busy and we hired a lot of engineers to staff up and then you get into really not busy, that was a bad idea. So, you know, we're okay staffed right now, but I certainly wouldn't want to get higher if, we're, if, if we had more work. I'd want to start pushing some of those costs of doing that work into the capital budget, as an example. Right, and that's very logical. That's yeah, a correct. great example. Yeah. Right, because so much of their work is probably related to capital projects, right? Absolutely. So it's yeah. hand in hand. Because yep. I think those are the opportunities we have to look for is what are those opportunities that could come out of one time kind of. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, reduce costs, well, health insurance, I don't know. I just thought it'd be useful. Is one percent reduction in premiums, about a hundred thousand. So, you know, we're not going to be saving a huge amount of money. And then you've talked in the past about reducing, uh, effectively, capital spending because debt is debt. And just to give you a number, uh, if you've reduced it a quarter of a percent, that's about two hundred thousand a year. Um, and I don't have any problem with you doing that over this two-year period. But I'd ask you not to change your policy. Let's just have an informal agreement because I think the policy has really been helpful. But I think, you know, John and I have talked a little about it. And, you know, as we talk about capital projects, we want a lot of money. And then we talk about the opening budgets, we don't want as much capital. It's an impossible equation to solve because we have needs on both sides. But if you shifted your model as you were just speaking, then we'd want to think about that because that's where we can. Yeah, I mean, you know, if, if, for instance, again, we knew there was some help down the road and we really needed some help in the short run, there's an easy couple hundred or four hundred thousand. Know, for one or two years. And that's that's the financial form. Questions on that side? Comments? Uh, Barf. <laughs> it's looked worse. Well, it, it just looked better. Yeah, I said sure how to do it. Um, I asked John also, and I want to give John a chance um, to take a look at um, and help us understand the different accounts that they have to work with. So that we understand um, you know, the same way that we have some and the town has some stabilization funds and other activities. How does it work on the school side? Okay. And is there anything there? What, what, what do we need to understand so that we can kind of see what, what's happening? It's, it's two pages. So it's oh, right. That's it. Okay. 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 Probably. <laughs> <laughs> no, they had this. <laughs> yeah, they had yeah. Um, so the the longer piece of paper comes from the DOR. Um, we did not create this one. The DOR. Did. Um, it it lists the um, revolving funds that school departments can have. Uh, we don't have stabilization funds. We don't have reserve funds. We have uh, some revolving accounts. Essentially what a revolving fund is, a revolving account is, the money that goes in has to be used for the purpose of the account. So for example, full day kindergarten, tuition. Uh, when we charge uh, a family $4,200 for full day kindergarten, that money has to be used for the additional time that they are in the full day program, not the half day piece of the full day program because all students get that half day piece. Um, so we can, we can only use um, a certain amount, and, and the fee is related to the expenses that we can charge to the account. That's how you come up with the 4200 um, So it certainly would be the staffing for the second half of the day, uh, paraeducator support, uh, curriculum materials, um, furniture if you need it, um, the, some uh, pieces of uh, principal salary, uh, assistant superintendent salary, things like that. That's how you come up with that. 4,200. Um, and the amount you want to keep in that fund, is there a philosophy for each account or is there a general philosophy that you say, well, I want to keep half the amount of the revenue we expect in the year? Or So the, the goal of several years ago when, um, when, when Pat Skatine was superintendent is you try to have a year's yeah, that's okay. worth in case you, yeah. you reach difficult times, then you, know, you, you have a year of cushion. Um, in some revolving accounts, we have been able to do that. In others, we have not been able to do that. Um, there are some revolving accounts we've had to 
increase the offset uh, depending on the needs and in others um, we haven't done it as much so you'll you'll see and that's what this second um, document is this is a list of all of our revolving funds um, you can see the history since uh, June 30th 2011 with the balances and then the balance as of June 30th 2014 and then what we have for the offset um, for the FY15 budget. Um, so essentially, if you want to know approximately how much will be left, assuming everything works the way it does on the spreadsheet for on June 30th, 2015, you would take the balance on June 30th, 2014 and subtract it from the offset. <clears throat> um, there's a couple of factors here I wanted to point out um, to you. The first one is the extended day program. Um, that That's more of a self system. We do have a small offset um, to our operating budget and that's for more administrative costs, secretarial costs. They don't have any, um, any uh, you know, secretarial help. Um, so that, that fund, the, all of the the personnel costs would come directly out of that revolving account. So you wouldn't see that. That's why that number is, is, is so small, even though you have a large balance there. Um, the special education, I'm sorry, I don't have my glasses on. Yeah, that one's one up from the bottom. Um, the special education tuition account, you notice right now, is fairly high. Um, however, and that's the account where we bring in out of district placements. And we've actually been pretty successful the last couple of years bringing in more students from surrounding communities. Um, and that's why you see a larger balance there on June 30th. However, you're gonna see also the offset is larger because we are gonna be charging, a lot of the students will come uh, with one-to-one -one paraeducators. Um, so we're not charging those to the operating budget, we're charging it to this account. So you'll see that a larger offset um, will bring that balance further down. Um, full day kindergarten, one thing I want to caution about the full day kindergarten, which you know is, is something the school committee is going to start discussing on October 20th, is do we go back to a lottery system? If we go back to a lottery system, it is going to have an effect on what this revolving account is going to look like because that's less revenue coming in. And that means that the budget for FY16 will have to be adjusted accordingly as well which could mean a decrease um, in the offset that's coming in for, that we use right now. So that, those are some factors that, um, you know, and that discussion is going to start happening on October 20th. Um, ideally, what we wanted to do, if, if we were on a, a plan to go to full day kindergarten for all students in a couple of years, we were trying to build up that account so that that, that year that we don't, uh, the rollover year, uh, we could use as much, clean out the revolving fund so that, that we wouldn't have to use any, you know, additional uh, operating money. But, um, you know, as you can see, I don't know if that's going to be possible. Why are there, why are there big swings in the, the gainer loss? Like, I, we look at the RISE program, for example. You, uh, in 12, you, we had a deficit, and then you have a big surplus in, in 13, and then we're back down to you know, just a small, small amount in 14. Like, what's what's causing the ups and downs in the in the revenue? Can like, what's with Rise? A lot of it's based on student need okay. um, and the amount of because Rise is an integrated program. Right. So your your revenue is is the regular days, the, the regular ed students, the ones that are not on IEPs, they pay the tuition. Okay. Special education students do not pay tuition. So if you have a larger special education population, that requires more staffing. Um, more needs if they if they yep. so that that's why you see a lot of fluctuation. Okay. <clears throat> I don't know if that answered the questions you were. Yeah, I think structurally it definitely answered the questions in terms of how these are set up, at least from from what yeah. I was hoping up. But we, uh, you know, because the question has come up, questions have come up. Well, we cannot use the funds from these revolving accounts for other areas that they weren't not meant for. So we, we couldn't take, for example, for full day kindergarten tuition, if we had a surplus, we couldn't take that and put it towards um, 
you know, a, a position at the high school or something like that. Right. It would, legally, we couldn't do that. And this also explains the issue of, um, as we talked about full day K, and shifted from the current tuition system to a reimbursed system that would be a year behind? Yes. But then the year after, because it's based on the October 1 enrollments, and so then your, ch your Chapter 70 is a, would be a year later. Um, and then once the Chapter 70 kicks in, though, we would see an increase in Chapter 70 funding. Right. And for example, this past year, we had 300, although currently we have 322 students uh, in kindergarten. And if all of them were tuition free and they were full day, um, we would be getting approximately $1.1 million more in Chapter 70 funding, which would increase your um, revenue. Any other questions? This is the first time I've, I've kind of seen this, so I very right. much appreciate it. And, and this, this should help you. Um, this, this chart from DOR is pretty helpful in what the purpose. We don't have all of the revolving accounts that are uh, listed here, um, but I think it gives you an, an understanding of. So, John, just go back to what you just said, what you would have expected increase on um, the state funding. So, you would have expected 1.1 if we had had full day K for that number of kids? Versus we took in 700. Yes, so we would see an increase in chapter 75. Yes. Right, and more than what we were getting for. Yes, tuition. that's correct. Oh, that, that's possible. Yeah. One of the when I when I went to the forum with Senator Lewis, they said one of the ways that you uh, can increase your chapter 70 funding is bringing more students. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's like, yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to do mezzanines now, right? Yes. <laughs> So this is a way you can do that. Another way you can do it is with preschool, because now preschool is part of the Chapter 70 funding, mm -hmm. which was, that was passed this year. Yeah, are you, I mean, given that, that discussion and, and what Senator Lewis said, kind of all those things, are you comfortable that we kind of figured out, given the way the state's playing the game right now, how to get as much as we can from each of the pieces, at least what the levers are, and then you guys can make With decisions. the current formula? Yeah, with, with any of the current activities, you know, I know we take advantage of, of, of a lot of the programs, which is great. Are there, are there other ones, I mean, that's one that was kind of a, I guess, an aha, uh -huh, well, not an uh -huh, we kind of know, but you get more money out of it if you do it that way. And right. you think about, um, you know, town meeting, and now they're thinking about the whole school thing. You know, everybody already decided it was going to cost more um, on the operating side and didn't necessarily accept that there's actually, no, it's going to be the opposite. Or it didn't make enough sense to people. Right. They'd say, how could that happen? It just doesn't work. Where else can we look for that? And, and who can help us with that? I mean, is it, is it Jason Lewis? Is he the guy who can help us? I, I'm, I'm, I'm so trying to find where, where else are the things where, where they say, you know what you ought to do is on a school lunch program, you should be offering uh, two kinds of salads because there's a, an extra yeah. premium you get if you have a second kind of salad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if this gets school in for Yeah, that's probably example. not the one you want to use. <laughs> it's on the top of the list. With all the nutrition <laughs> laws. That's one that has the most restrictions on it, too, yeah. in terms of what you all can right, have for an ending balance, too. <laughs> so, and the kids are already ready to work. You know, you yeah, can always, yes, and, and, and you know, this is certainly a school committee discussion, that you can always look at trying to raise user fees, but that, uh, you know, I don't know if you want to go in that direction because... Yeah, I'm looking You're talking about how you get more state money. Oh, state, state money. money. Yeah. State money. Where are there state money opportunities that we can learn um, more about? Okay, you know, one, that's for all of us. Yeah, it, I mean, most of um, you know, most of our grant funding is federal. Mm -hmm. You know, and, yeah. and the three grants that we just mm -hmm. received, town and schools, really? is a fe a federal grants. Mm -hmm. um, one thing we talked about today, and I, I don't know if we get a lot from it, but it's something we've never tapped into. Um, but it's, I think it's something. It's time to look into it. Is E-rate. Um, E-rate is uh, when you, there's, a, there's an amount of money you pay in your phone bill that says universal charge or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, that goes towards funding for schools um, and libraries for uh, technology mo and t uh, telecommunications. It, it probably wouldn't, and it's, a lot of it's based on um, the poverty index of a community. Um, so we wouldn't see large amounts of funding from that, but we probably could get ten to fifteen thousand um, dollars for telecommunications if we were purchasing um, some some infrastructure hardware in, in a year. So it's a it's a re and they have doubled the E rate for next year, the federal um,
government doubled the rate, um, the amount of money available to $4 billion, and they've changed, they've changed some of the formulas. So it, it is something that I think we can look at. It's just not, it, we're not going to get a lot out of it. But I, I would think that working closely with our state legislators is a good way to impact the, the formula. I mean, they have a direct line to the Ways and Means chairs and staff. Um, and I would probably, I know the presentation said like, oh, state aid is completely unpredictable, but I would say, like, I know that it's part of the conversation. They always talk about holding communities harmless. So at least you're supposed to get what you got last year, whereas other um, line items within the state budget, people are coming like begging to be level funded because they don't want to go down from the previous year. But I feel like communities generally at least get what they got the previous years. But we're but like we were saying before, the levels are always and the and the um, knobs are turned in different ways every year. So, but but I do think that legislators have if they if they take the time to really understand those levers, they really do have an opportunity to um, advocate for their communities and how they can be turned in a way that is beneficial for them. And um, what's the level to to influence them? Is it is it town manager? Is it school committee? Is it selectmen? Is it all of the above? Voters? I, voters? Yeah. No, voters? Yeah. 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 So, I mean, can we get a letter writing campaign going? Couldn't hurt it. I know, it's a big number, so a little swing. So we might not go under, but there's a big difference between level funded and 2.5%, 3%. Oh, yeah. Big number, so. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, maybe we better think about what we can do to influence them, I guess. Cool. OK. Questions, comments? And I mean, maybe, actually, the Foundation Budget Review Commission is something. Which is looking at the chapter seven. The chapter seven. Oh, okay. It's it just yeah. started and it's supposed to have a report by the by June. And so maybe yeah. and I don't know if they're gonna be doing any kind of public hearings or something. They are, they are. gonna do so or across the state. So maybe I I mean maybe we need to look at it more closely, um, but maybe we send someone to testify. Well, I know that there's a, a member from the school committee on the board, and there's also a member from my, oh, okay. from my professional organization, yeah. MASBO, is also mm -hmm. a member of the committee, because obviously the school business officials are very concerned and interested in the outcome of this uh, debate yeah. and discussion, so. No, um, from, from NASC. Uh, I think it's about <laughs> <laughs> Every little bit helps. So, so they're, they're, are they looking at not only the, um, they're not only looking at the formula, but what the foundation budget really is, because the foundation budget is always like a way less than what it actually re requires to operate. Yeah, they're, the they're, you know, it's, yes. they're supposed to provide a certain percentage of the foundation budget to schools, but of course they're all operating at way more than what the foundation, foundation budget, budget really is. is yes. so. So is the so are they look is the I, I'm not entirely sure is the commission looking at both what the foundation budget level should be as well as what the formula should be is it like a two part yeah they're looking yeah. you know because all of the costs are based on 1993 right and you know health They're insurance yeah, yeah. special education costs mm -hmm. things like that haven't really <coughs> gone up with inflation when they use the formula okay. so though they're looking at the, those things okay. so, just as an outsider. Correct me if I'm wrong, but one of the issues seems to be the great majority of cities only spend the foundation budget of it. They don't add extra taxes right. to it. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to start messing around with the formula, they're going to all need the most help first. So, right. so that's hard to believe that some communities can just spend the some, some very nearby us yeah. that have city in front of them spend the minimum. And probably the state is funding most of their right. education costs. So, you know, all this might work out well for the state and communities as a whole, but for Reading, we're kind of towards the end of that benefit line, I'd say. Is there a concern that if the, if the formula becomes more equitable, Reading will do worse? I have that concern. Mm -hmm. yeah. That would be more equitable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not for us, but yeah. In some ways, it's a bluffing game. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so um, 
next steps. Um, so uh, this is uh, a great outline for form um, a little bit of update. One of the things that FinCom is going to need to do soon is talk about the recommended use of free cash uh, for at least a year, maybe two, and kind of how we how we can see that structured and use that guidance information to go to all the groups so that they can start looking at what their budget is going to be and how you know, where the priorities are and what's going to happen and see where we have mismatches. So I guess from my perspective, um, there was a lot of good news here. So we were, you know, a year ago we thought we were you know, going to be sucking down free cash dramatically. Turns out it grew. Maybe that's what we should turn more. I'm the only one that thought that you can say that. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you think about it, everything will be fine. Yeah, yeah, but but bottom line is, you know, even if we you know took all the free cash out of the system over yeah. the next couple of years, you know the budgets are up about three percent, three and a half percent max, and not sustainable. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's you know maybe it's a short term solution. It's most certainly not a long term solution. So I think that again, my perspective for discussion, um, you know, we still are in a situation where if we're going to fund the priorities of the town as they're laid out today. Uh, we're going to need to look at how to responsibly use that cash, and at some point, it is going to take some kind of an operating override restructure to allow us to not shrink. I don't know how everybody else feels about that. Any feedback on that comment? Can you do some more sensitivity analysis that you had up there about adding different levels of free cash and what that? Whatever you want. No, do you have a dynamic so you can... I was going to say, I, yeah, I brought it to Financial Forum before where people have a discussion where you just do it up on the screen. That's not hard. Do you have some suggestions on the numbers to put up? No, we just do it interactively. Oh, interactively. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I kind of be interested. You'd have the 1.7, maybe it's about a 2.5. That might be an interesting bit point. And yeah, and discuss. in terms of timing, you know, your October 29th Financial Forum will go over this one. A lot of people won't have seen it. Um, because of the health insurance thing, you know, I hate to say this, and I don't really know how it fits in, but it might be worthwhile to have some kind of a meeting before the January school committee hearings and after health insurance. But that's right smack dab in the middle of the holiday season. I just don't know how that's practical. So I said, again, what kind of meeting? You know, if we, if we know our health insurance numbers, let's say, early December for us, just for mm -hmm. argument's sake. Mm -hmm. um, John, I think, has the earliest public meetings. The selectmen's are like mid-January, but you're sooner than that. Yeah, I think it's January 10th. Yeah. Um, so it's June so 10th. in theory, there's a five-week period of time, which mm -hmm. is a lousy time of the year, mm -hmm. for us to have some kind of community discussion about what do we do now that we know health insurance. Mm -hmm. But you ought to have the discussion in advance, you know, and then if health insurance comes in crazily, good or bad, then you need that second meeting. Bob, does that the user consultant? Do they have a sense of how many bids we get? Yeah, not a lot. Mm -hmm. The um, health care. I am, I am, I am. <laughs> good, good choices. The health care projections are definitely um, alarming. I'm just wondering if the if the they were based on um, some of the Massachusetts assumptions based on cost containment and that kind of thing, or if it was based on kind of like a, what the national market is. Uh, both. both. Um, Massachusetts is at a lower base, uh -huh. but the outlook is now the same. You know, we're, we're, we did a lot of things proactively, so mm -hmm. over a longer period, it's a smaller percent, just like in Reading. But from this point forward, we kind of all, it's so, it's so uncertain, we're kind of all in the same spot. Um, you know, it's probably slightly better in Massachusetts and slightly worse in places that have done nothing. But, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's 12% or 14%, that's a lot. Yeah, absolutely. I know. It would be nice to have the number. I feel sometimes, but we need time. But sometimes we do this process so early. We just set ourselves up for a lot of extra work well, because I've, then we get real numbers and we have to go back to the drawing board. Yeah, I'm I'm always frustrated by that. If we rewind the calendar four or five years, um, we had a process whereby FinCom effectively used zero free cash in the budget, and we had a guess on health insurance and a guess on state aid. And FinCom said, if either of those work out against us, that's when we'll throw free cash at the budget. So that allowed 
the school and the towns to build budgets, not caring about those two things, if you will. And that worked out well for about two years, and then it just didn't work anymore because things got so uncertain and you had to use free cash in the budget anyways. Mm -hmm. So we could certainly build a budget based on a health insurance assumption of, let's just say, plus 5%, and say any amount above plus 5 is handled by free cash. But if you're going to do that, just be careful how much free cash you use anyhow, because that other amount could be another half a million or a million. But it would certainly be easier from our perspective to just not have to worry about right. health insurance, not have to worry right. about and safety. Right, and be able to say every year it's 5%. Yeah. Some year it might be 10 and, and, and some that's, year. that's, again, we did that for two or three years in a row. It worked out really well because kind of like some of John's discussion about it's nice to build up the one year because you don't know what the next year is. If you mentally earmark, or actually really do it, a certain amount of free cash for these issues, that that means we can both have budgets that are good for that year, mm -hmm. but whoops, we've got a year's notice that it's not going to be right. so good in the mm -hmm. future. But at least we're not doing something in December or January. Right. Right. And sometimes when we're putting it out there, oh, we're using, you know, a million and a half of free cash, it looks irresponsible. Yeah. When in fact we're doing it because we know because yeah, the news we got today. So sometimes it's easier to say, you know, okay, we're going to budget 5% increase on health care, and then people think, oh, that's somewhat reason reasonable, and then you can see the headline, oh, it went up 10%. People can relate to that more you, than, oh my gosh, you're taking 2 million handle. out of free cash. Would they crazy? You know? So yeah. the way you. You're right. The way you present it looks better too. There's something to be said for going for a certain amount of expected, and then that's what the rainy day count. Yeah, so I Just to go a little contrary to what you were suggesting, the free cash at the level that it's at right now, unless we took an absurdly low, like maybe five percent assumption on health care, um, we're we're kind of leaving that kitty potentially uh, higher, if not growing, still very high. And maybe that's not the right set of credit. If the five happened. Right, but even if it's, I mean, we should see what's the impact if it's eight instead of five. I mean, if it does grow, it's 300 grand compared to where we've been spending a million. Oh, yeah, so what, yeah, so but, what? But 300 grand for us to cut in the last three weeks of a budget season. I, I get it on time. Right. Yeah, I understand <laughs> on time. Right, so, yeah, so what, are, what, are, what right. are the real dollars yeah. equate to yeah. for health? Uh, for like 100,000. For health? Uh, yeah. One percentage point was 100,000. Yeah. Or maybe that we, we yeah, it's a balance between them. Your order of magnitude points well taken, but with the time that both sides have to balance the budget, that's the real stress. Mm -hmm. is you have to now come up with X in a very short mm -hmm. amount of time. You yeah. know, especially if the budget process is already out there. Because right. normally we don't get health insurance till early February. No, no, I'm, I'm suggesting actually a combination rather yeah. than only do it here and then don't touch free cash, only use it if health comes up higher. Or well, I'm not saying don't lower. use it at all, but mm -hmm. just bear in mind <coughs> right, that there, is, there may be something else right. coming around. That yeah, you can't not use it. No. Yeah. Yeah, because otherwise, here's the picture. <laughs> there it is right there. Yeah. Any other questions, comments? If anyone has any thoughts, um, send uh, send me an email, mark an email. You know, we can do anything you like. In a couple weeks of financial form. Yeah, I think the key issue is how do we present it in the financial form? Um, our thinking. We don't have another meeting before then, right? No. That's just the three <laughs> weeks more about that. Um, Philosophically, I would like to see us push revenues more and not make such big assumptions on expenses okay. and tap free cash less. Other thoughts? So we probably should think about what specific kinds of numbers we want to mm -hmm. share at that meeting. At what point do we actually give guidance? Is it at the end of that meeting? Is it it, it could be in October. You have in the past. Sometimes we've met in early November. Yeah, that's when you, that's when you yeah. But it's usually one of those because the budget process has already started. Except Mark, I haven't built that yet. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. So we really should be talking about that right now. That should be kind of the next topic. Is kind of at least thinking that through because we're going to have to present something in the form. Let me bring this back up.
So they're, you know, again, maybe we add some revenue, maybe we reduce some costs. How much is the first question? Half a million? Well, if you move from 14% healthcare assumption five. to five, then that's, 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 that's 900 grand. That's 900 grand. Right, that's almost a million. That's almost 2%. Right. We're on easy street. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think that's already right, yeah. I think five sounds a little too long. But it would be nice come up, coming up with a number that we can use year to year, and I think probably yeah. people understand five's a high number. Now, is it with well, healthcare it, costs that we all experience? Mm -hmm. It's high only based on Prop 2 and a half. It's exactly. Not high health insurance. Right. Yeah, but it's been sure. it's been we're in a position where we have this, you know, free cash. Yeah. This. And it keeps mounting, and then we get ourselves in this position of how could we ever get it over? Because look at this free cash situation. Yeah, you're right. But, but you said that the target free cash rate is around 7%. And you guys have a 5% five percent of all five, those But I thought the um, um, bond yeah. raters oh, they, seven. They'd rather have 10. 10. Well, they'd well, 15, 20. <laughs> 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 so we do have a triple-A bond rating. So we right, but we did just get triple-A yeah. bond rating. Don't do anything until yeah. after February 1st. <laughs> no, we get a bond rating. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm fine with changing the health insurance assumption. You know, five is a little risky, but yeah. whatever you guys seven. want. You know, we used to use, when we sort of didn't know anything, we used either seven or eight. We just said, you know, I don't know, seven or eight. But what's the normal? I mean, this is extraordinary. What's the normal? Well, well in Reading, we've actually done really well. Um, it's probably, I, I haven't done the math lately, but in the last five years, I'll say it's closer to six. Oh, the actuals were close to six in the last five years? For us. Mm -hmm. That's how much yeah. our budget is. That's what we do yeah. within mm -hmm. that, yeah. that number. That's six field. But a lot of that has been based on things that unions right. have agreed to that there's just no room there anymore. Mm -hmm. Those, first of all, the levers aren't there. So there's nothing for them to agree to. But we can defend it, as you said. Like you there's, said there's, there's history. You could, yeah. you could put, a, you could put yeah. a chart up with history. And yeah, just like Sharon six. budgets revenues sometimes on a five-year rolling average or a 10 or a 20. You could do it that way. I, I, I think we should be honest about how we're choosing these numbers and say, you know, explain that. I, I don't think we should just say six because that's what it has yeah. been over the past five years. I think we need to be honest with people about the different numbers we thought about and why we ch chose what we did, but also what else is, it, what other uh, estimates are out there. And just, if they're looking at a chart, we chose this percentage because of X, but um, there were also these other um, numbers out there that, that we could have chosen because, and on such a basis. So. The only concern is every year we look at this crystal ball, and it's such a crystal yeah. ball because we're wrong every year, so. Yeah. I don't, I would think five year trend, what we've spent, is a very responsible way to base your next year. Right, with the caveat that we could be in for something bigger this year, but we chose, like you were saying, yeah, so right. we chose and six because that's, that's what, what we, we spent historically. Mm -hmm. But we might, there might be a big increase here, but we don't want to have a budget that at this point because it's such a loose assumption. Well, I mean, we expect the number to be 11 to 17. Well, look at these numbers here. Just again, realize that I'm in the middle of negotiations and I have a limited yeah. amount I can say. I can't tell you what I expect. Um, this is the national number, 8 to 11. So if you really just want to be extremely simple, maybe Massachusetts and Reading is better shape and this doesn't hit us, but this will. Use the 8. That's a mindless number, if you will. And it's higher than the increases we've seen. That comes from a consultant. I didn't make that up. He yeah. said national, you know, core rates. I think that would be helpful up. to have, like, you know, this where the where those numbers are coming from, yeah. and tell people these, these, these are four these numbers, numbers are, all come from our consultant doing okay. the RFP. Yeah. So I think we say there's that, but then because I was shocked at the, these two. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was three total. I thought the 11 included 8 plus 3. Right, right, right. <laughs> but it doesn't. Right, right. <laughs> and also some of the mindset is 8's a high number. It is a high number. You throw out 14, and we're accepting that. It's exactly. unacceptable. It's, yeah. And, I, and, and seriously, as society, we have to 
we have to get the headline if it's higher than that and realize we were responsible and budgeted 8%. 8 percent. 8 percent is a large number. And why do we pay a consultant to tell us how to spend more money? Hopefully he gets the best deal. <laughs> How does A feel? I feel more Better than 14. Um, I mean, my, the whole thing, I see it as how much free cash are we expecting to spend of the, of the balance that we've got there now? And if we use 8, then that's going to be probably 300. Worst case, or best case, 300,000. If you use 8, this number here becomes something like 2.2% using that much free cash. So it's not as bad as one, but it's not exactly what we'd like to be, but it's still early. Well, the, the special ed cost is probably going to have to get adjusted up okay. for your FY16, so that, okay. that's going to eat away. Two months eating, so. <laughs> if you, well, right now it's, yeah. it's based on 0.4%, right? Yeah, I, I, I don't think it's 0.4%. Yeah. Our circuit breaker number is going to be lower next year. So because, that's we, because we didn't spend as much as we anticipated last um, year? The, the threshold went up to 42000 from thirty eight, so oh. that means less students are qualified. Oh. Um, and then one student aged out that was a, a larger mm -hmm. tuition. Okay. So when you combine those things, that's going to reduce your circuit breaker. So now we're going to be under a million on circuit breaker, which mm -hmm. that's the first time in a long time. Yeah. So that's going to have an effect on that. And circuit breaker of money is from the previous year, or is it? Yeah, so we're, yes. So you yes, are so basically reimbursing yes. it for what you spent. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's no. It's no, we budgeted it's known for, yes. for the budget year. Yes. Right? So the amount yeah. of money that we budgeted this year was mm -hmm. last year's circuit breaker, mm -hmm. and we're spending it down. Mm -hmm. Do you have an anticipation of the magnitude of the change? Yeah, it's yeah, about okay. 200 and, Two, I think I gave it to you. 242,000 or something? Uh, $233,000 less 000. than this year. So that's just about 2% of the one that we made. Very comfortable using that 8 for now. The notion that the higher we use some amount of free cash, probably the size 14, 600. Okay. And we use that as an assumption. We hold. State aid to two and a half. I don't think we have any better information. Yeah, we'll go higher. Yeah, we'll go higher. Is that what we got this past year? No. Okay, was it cleaning percent? Yeah, it was just under one. Under one. It was just under one. And that was a surprise. Yeah. So two point five percent is being very optimistic. So they owe us. I think we'll get five this year. They certainly deserve. They definitely. <laughs> what, what's hurt a little bit is the last couple of years we've only received the twenty-five dollar student in Chapter Seventy funding. We've not. It was only like a hundred thousand, a little yeah, more, right. in Chapter Seventy funding increase. Wow. So that's hurt us the last couple of years. Oh, say that again. We've only we've only gotten the the increase the twenty-five dollar increase per student for Chapter Seventy funding for the last two years. So wow. it was only about one hundred and twenty, hundred thirty thousand dollars of Chapter Seventy funding from the previous year. And that's usually a big, you know, chapter 70 has gone up the last few years, so that, that's hard, the, the state aid piece. Okay, so that right now, do we want to change any of the other assumptions? Yeah. Push revenue? Yeah, that was, that was <laughs> okay. operating first. Rev want to go back to the revenues? So this is this is not so much. We already increased tax size tax, right? Yeah, it's it's just hard to go anywhere. Yeah, so these seem really reasonable. We so had a new product with this bill. <laughs> we talked about the credit card, but they didn't apply. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is an opportunity, but it's not something we're going to decide in this room. Just so you know, next Tuesday night, Sharon is having a discussion with the selectmen on fees. But you know, even if they took every suggestion we have, I doubt it's, it's even worth mentioning. No, and they're always worth it. They never really. Right. Good you know, 
raised a hundred thousand dollars, that'd be at the outside. I'm just making the number up. I don't really know, but that would hardly matter at all. In this yeah, discussion. I think it'd be maybe well, less if, than that. If, if you don't need the hundred grand, I don't have a place I can use it. So. Well, just remember that hundred grand is mostly coming out of our residents' pockets, so <laughs> it's one of those. How do you want to pay? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, anybody see any opportunity on revenues to grow? Anything else on accommodated costs that we think would be more pressing? It's really health insurance. The rest is pretty it's well behaved, actually. Yeah. Oh, no. um, it's known us by law we can't go down okay. in our budget. Well, yeah, how much and I don't know that we're going up next year. It's either up or up, up zero or 50,000. Are we at 550? We do for no sound. Right. Yeah. <laughs> 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 capital. Okay, it's a choice. Mm, that's right. So let's talk capital. Um, if we look at the request for capital funding for next year, that's actually in the packet for a different reason. Uh, page seven. Now, when you go over the November warrant, which will be shortly, you're going to find there's a request for 724000 in November capital funding. So some of that free cash will go away, if you agree with it at all. Um, there's a small, and it, and it really isn't bad, there's a small structural deficit that's circled with 366000 in the FY16 capital plan. And that's based on using 5%. If you cut it by 200 grand, you can see what it would mean. Um, I'll, I'll speak for at least my side and say, in FY16, please don't cut it by more than 200,000. But the year out, we have a more planning time. That's OK. Right. 200,000 is going to be hard for us to balance in FY16. Um, I'm willing to take a certain amount out of roads, but there's at the very least a moral obligation with the last override that some of it was pledged to road money. We're above that, so I could cut the excess and not feel bad, although that I wouldn't want to. And one of the issues we have on the town side is we have a $600 plus thousand dollar fire truck that we have to buy. Oh, so that's what that is. That doesn't okay. give you a lot of flexibility there. We take some money out of public works equipment if we had to in roads. And I don't know what the schools would do, especially in facilities. What's in the municipal building budget that's happening? Um, I don't think the deep, well, yeah, if you go on the next two pages, the first page is just a summary of schools, and the second page is a summary of municipal. So you can see there's uh, so roof, roofing is on both trails. Actually, we moved the roofing this year for the yeah. Yeah. 394 for roofing is um, 200,000 on town hall which can probably be cut to 80. Um, we're working with facilities on that. There's a really bad leak in the annex, that the connector there. And then I don't remember, there's $194,000 of another project that probably could be pushed out of here if it had to. I don't really want to speak with Kelly, though. The 80 I do know. <clears throat> the 100000 on under technology infrastructure is something we have to do with the fire station. Um, and that, that 200 to 80 on town hall, what are we sacrificing? Um, there's 600 in the budget for the next couple of years for the whole roof of town hall, but the slate roof on this old building is eventually needs to replace. It's not urgent. It can be pushed out of the place. But the, I think the way they split it was 200 and 400, although it doesn't look that way here. Um, however it's split, the near term can be produced by 120,000 without a problem. Let's say 100,000 without a problem. So, you know, we, we had a couple of discussions about it, and you know, if you have to cut 200,000, then you do. Uh, it would be virtually impossible unless we start funding at April town meeting some items. Like we're at, again, we're asking for the 724. That's a pretty big buy. There's going to be some other issues that come up in the rest of the year that's going to be another bite. You know, it's kind of, 
in a way it's a cheap gimmick, but another way it works is that if we take an FY16 item such as the, uh, the Josh Wheaton roof and move it out of the FY16 budget and just pay for it now, all of a sudden FY16 yeah. looks great. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's kind of a trick, but on the other hand, we all feel good. The roof's done sooner and we have money. <laughs> That's a good way to use free cash, honestly. Exactly. Yeah. So if you're willing to stomach 700000 in November and another half million to pick a number in, in April, or whatever you cut out of the operating budget in April, 200000 fine. I don't have a problem with that. It doesn't really matter when capital is funded, mostly. Mm -hmm. I know, at least with those kind of items, you can see how things come in and then choose to do it or not. Yeah. Yeah, one, uh, one thing I'll caution you on on capital is once the year starts, we're assuming we're going to spend capital. So you can never plan on us cutting capital spending in the middle of the year. That's right. something we have to really you know, care for and think about a little later. Yeah. But you could probably react to bringing something in or not. With enough notice. Yeah. I'm intrigued with the idea of carrying things back and then looking to fund specific projects town-wide as they're needed, setting priorities that way. So on, on something like this, to, to chop it back a little bit now, and you know, the possibility it'll come back if it rises to the to the top, or if not, it rolls. So we could probably get you a list together of some size of capital that we'd like to do this current year if we had the opportunity to above and beyond the number you're going to see soon. <clears throat> so, you know, if you're cutting 200000 out of the budget, we'll show you 200000 of the first priority for April, let's just say. In terms of roads in the West Street project, when we've already allocated that money, right? Yeah, that's an interesting question. I just last night got an estimate. West Street has a bunch of parts to it for the local share. Yeah. The most volatile one was the construction costs. Um, and without knowing whether contingencies are needed, we came in about 75000 under budget. Now, we had projected it as debt, planned to borrow debt, so that's not a savings right away. But in theory, we'll just borrow less, so there'll be some little amount left. We're going to borrow it over four years, so it's hardly going to be much. But, um, you know, that's at least good news. And how long is that project going to go? I'm asking because we got to continue to invest in the roads, but are we going to be really already well, sort of the past construction time is two wise years. and stuff? The debt will be four years. Because so. So I'm more thinking that but that's, we can only do so many roads at any given time. That's going to be know, a big impact to the town. We, we cut back on roads slightly morally because we're doing West Street and we have local costs. Whether that's really strictly accurate, it was good enough for me. Mm -hmm. um, right, that's where I'm going. When that goes away, you know, we're paying 400000 a year for West Street debt service, let's just say. When that goes away, do you spend 400000 on roads or do you spend a lesser amount? That's kind of a future discussion. Um, and again, when I say we can cut back on roads, I'm probably talking of, you know, hundred or 200000 yeah. It's not a lot, not millions. I don't want to make that play so well, truthfully. Well, cutting back on roads would not play well at all. Yeah. But, We've spent a lot of money on roads the last three years. Right, Ian, in reality, the and work's getting done, but not on our dime. You know, right. like yeah. the West Street. Yeah. So you have to sell it correctly. Yeah. But to be honest, as much as people want roads fixed, they also don't want them all torn up at the same time. Right, right. right. So we're only a year or two out, probably. It's fine. And, and right. you know, if you look at that budget, it goes up $50,000 a year for the next right. 10 years. Right. Right, and we, we put a lot of additional money in roads, right? Yes. When that override, we ended up putting an extra $200,000 in. We've increased it 50 grand. And as Sharon million. mentioned, we spent some of that 4 yard money, I don't know, six or 800000 on roads, mm -hmm. sort of one time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and the bad news is we haven't run that pavement condition index for a while, but I doubt we've changed. I We're spending all that money for about the same. I thought you are right. Yes, other than a couple of specific roads. So what do people think about pulling down four and a half percent, a little better grand out for 16? That's uh, four and three quarters. Four and three quarters? 
quarter million. Oh, sorry, sorry, quarter point. Driven by the the roof. I'm going to look at it and see what those projects <laughs> are and see how we name it. I can show you those in October. <clears throat> you know, we we had a two million dollar deficit two months ago. Now it's three hundred thousand. We moved a lot of stuff out. We did some of it early. You know, we'll, we'll continue. We did. Happens all the time. Things change. The good news is, over ten years, this is a pretty much a balanced capital plan. If things you know, work out the way they're projected, the trouble is sometimes seven and eight years from now, capital isn't as carefully planned as the stuff that's immediately obvious. We'll come in with a list so you really understand what you're up against. Okay. And the end of this is at the forum on the 29th, which is our meeting. That is when we can have a specific discussion of how much free cash we're, we're giving as guides, mm -hmm. as opposed to finishing that tonight. Right. Okay. Any, any other discussion on that tonight? Do you mind emailing us those other slides you showed tonight? Yeah. Yeah. Go see the history. Oh. Can I just, I just want to get a clarification of the, I, I think I understand the process that you're going through. So, um, say by the next financial forum or the date, a little after that, the number that is agreed upon is, is going to be with certainty, uh, pe pending some catastrophe, so that when we develop budgets, we, we know what the, the revenue will be. Right, because we're going to lock in a number for health costs despite what they turn out to be. Okay, so if there's increases or if there's increases or decreases, say in Chapter 70 or, I mean, state aid or something like that, we're still going to have that certainty. Right. And free cash will take the difference. That's what we're talking about, exactly. Okay, I just, I, I just want to make sure I understand the process. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then I envision also a number for free cash that will get used, um, you know, some plug number that goes in there into that free cash plan. Right. That gives the the guidance. Right, the goal would be come out uh, with a percentage increase in the operating natural. What if, uh, what if we, health insurance comes in the other way at 6%? If we're skipping down, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> are you gonna, are you gonna make I want to live in your world. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we, we really would want to come back to everybody and, and you know, maybe this is a hallelujah, maybe the state comes in higher too. but. In terms of the guidance, I'd say we have the capital budget. budget. Well, well, where are you going to well, where are you going to put the money? Is what I'm asking. Mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not being a wise guy. Right. Uh, no, right. You're saying, are we going to then? Well, we're we're going to we go money. into free yeah. cash unless we feed someplace else. Well, that's the question. Yeah. yeah. Because it, yeah. Or, I, I think it, at the end of the day, it's a function of what's that that free cash number that we feel comfortable putting in and taking the risk on those other things. So if that's a very modest number, then you know probably we could come back and say, hey, there's money. If it's a substantial number, which I think it's going to need to be in order to have any kind of a budget to play with, um, then I think I'd be inclined to, to put it back in to free cash unless it's right. really hugely different. It's like the deal you make. If you're going to cover free use for cash, cover one end, you got to. Yeah. Yeah, I think you know we're trading some certainty, you know, for for that for that opportunity. And what the difference there would be, what, $200,000 total? If it came in at six, just as an example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not massive. And again, the yeah. news is this year we'll know we're only three or four each. No, no, I understand. But then we'll you split it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that too. <laughs> yeah. No, trust me. I, 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 there's a, a quote that's incorrectly attributed to Senator Proxmire that went to the effect of a billion dollars here, a billion dollars there. After a while, you start talking about some real money. <laughs> but it's not enough anyway. Yeah, I don't think we're trying. So is that? A, a yeah, I just want to understand the, the process. That yeah, I think that's where we're, it's it's creating more budget yeah. certainty. So we're not waiting for the state aid number, the health insurance number. Yeah, well, we're we're all waiting for it. But in but, terms of your budget, right, in terms time, of developing know. the budget, yeah. yeah, yeah. John and I met earlier in the week, and we also talked about that you and the community deserve to see what a real budget would look like, in addition to whatever the budget is we can afford. Yeah, that's actually so really clear on that. I think that's an important idea. I think that got lost 
um, last year in a big way. I think people kind of accepted, well, that's the budget, that's what they're looking for, and assumed that that funded everything. Um, it didn't really have a feel for, for where you guys feel the lacks are. Um, I think that's an important thing to share with the community. And, and town meeting and the community, both. And, and I think the other thing that I would say is, you know, energizing the communities that have the same priorities is something we didn't, none of us did a good job of last year. It didn't happen with the, the school building idea. It didn't happen with a lot of things. It just kind of, we should do better this year. And, and I'm, I'm pointing at all of us. I'm not pointing at anybody in particular. All right, we good on that one? All right, thank you guys. You're, you're more than welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting, however. <laughs> thank you. you. <laughs> That's a bit different. It's very generous, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 well. no. yeah. It's a Thursday. So that was C. Let's go back to A. Okay. So the town meeting articles. Oh, wait till you have a one, two, three, four, 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 four. Yeah. How are we at? We're five. Oh, five. Yeah, we're fine. Here we go. That's right, a six is not good. Um, page That's a really four. four. Is it? Yeah, it feels warm. Yeah, um, November town meeting will not be a heavy lifting FinCon town meeting at all, which is great. Other than the FinCon report, but that's other than the FinCon report. We did our heavy lifting that last meeting. <laughs> <laughs> um, last time this last meeting was enough. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that's good. Article 3, the top box, is our, just as a reminder, is in there from what was approved by September town meeting for November, if you will. Doesn't mean it was fine. And we do have some additional changes down below on page 4. Um, uh, I don't, th this, has, this has been discussed in public meetings, but not extensively. There is a, if, if you haven't noticed, if you have noticed the retaining wall in the parking lot in front of the high school, it's all cordoned off. It's going to be a repair job of unknown magnitude. Uh, the schools would like to request $30,000 to do an assessment of what that's ultimately going to cost. Uh, their intention is to do work in the summer, so it's quite possible if the study comes in quick enough that, and we do have a January town meeting, they may ask for funding in January. And I'm sorry, John left, so he couldn't hear me say that. And that that's what we enough. discussed. Can we add this to the lawsuit? It's bigger than 30000 that's just the study. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, hundreds of thousands. Yeah, they're mostly yeah. first. Um, there's a $14,000 request to increase a $40,000 allocation for water to so do a little bigger, big, bit of a bigger job and, and buy a bigger one. And then there's just a renaming, if you will, of the 100000 is really for the roof over the multi-purpose room. So we just want to make sure Tommy can clarify that. And then the schools added in 140000 to the FY16, which made it a little more out of balance, which is why there's some, some things to cut. Um, so that's really that's really all. It's just again changing the capital plan uh, for November. And my my guess is, depending on how the discussion goes, um, either in January or at uh, April town meeting, we'll change the FY16 capital to ba balance whatever the funding is. So it's clearly not balanced right now. Any discussion? As they say, we're ready to take a vote. All right, all those in favor? Opposed? And we're going to have a 6-0. All right, you had a, a X-0-0. I thought that was interesting. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm sure there's nothing meant by that. <laughs> Could have been XXX. That's usually what I think of those days. Um, do you want to assign reports tonight? Just to sure. Set out the Let's way. do the We <coughs> see completion. We'd like to do that one. Not here. Yes. <laughs> for number three, for three, uh, yeah. I can do it. Yeah. We won't need to use fours, but we will need to use five, which is really on page six. So there's the seven hundred twenty-four thousand. There's the six hundred, or whatever it was, approved by September, plus what we just added in tonight. And then there's a uh, sort of a book, bookkeeping entry, if you will, for accounting. We need to add 46,750 of costs, and we're offsetting that down below by 46,750 of revenue. 
So this is, we are going to be the lead community in the regional housing situation. It's a four-way share of an employee. We had budgeted our share of the wages not knowing what the ultimate outcome would be, but now that we're the lead community, we have to pay the whole wage and budget the whole wage, and the support from other communities comes as a, in as a revenue. Um, this is the first regional deal where we're, we've sort of been the lead and hired the person. The other ones we're in, you see something under the expense line item mm -hmm. that pays the other community. So does it so rotate? That's the difference. No, in this case, oh. Red, Red, uh, Reading is it for the housing position, oh. for the assessor, and for the um, it's health, expense. it's, it's Melrose. So, and that's not going to change. It's no. Melrose, and we just pay that. So that's bookkeeping. Um, there's the hundred thousand of excise taxes down below that we talked about. Um, the forty-six seven fifty is a wash, and that's how much free cash you're going to be asked to use if you support all that capital. And I will say, I did talk with Kelly. Um, Hopefully I brought it with me. I have a pretty good sense of priorities of those issues up there if you thought that was too much. You know, they're willing to defer the Eaton roof, but I'm not. Uh, they're already starting on the first part. They would have a patchwork or a quilt. If they didn't do it all at once, I'd just say do the whole thing. Um, so the second item is essential. There is a leak. There is a problem there. The fuel management is the same. That's essential. The generator is also essential. The thirty thousand is essential. The fifty thousand DPW truck, and if you will, the total of fifty-four thousand for the water heater could both be deferred. And by doing that, you'd actually have to remove the forty thousand that's already been approved for the water heater. But both of us would be okay if you want to take one hundred thousand out. That's that's a way you can do it. One hundred four thousand. The other choice you have is. I don't know if it's going to be much different, but you wait till the floor tell me. But I don't think you're going to know anything different. I think we end up we take it out of here and then it's roll puts it into more the pressure. Next year. And then we're just going to ask you for April for January. So okay. yeah, why? Yeah, I, I, I didn't know if the optics of six twenty four would be a problem, but you know now that we've had a fuller discussion, it's just a question of when you pay it. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing, 30000 not to replace the retaining wall, but to just study it. Yeah. Oh my god. That's it could crazy. be a really big I think that'd be replaced. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really, really big. Really free crash. Yes. Mm -hmm. That might be the example of a one time <laughs> high priority need. I'm serious, things like that can't be added back into the lawsuit that's got ongoing. It's an ongoing lawsuit, I can't come. <laughs> I'd say pretty unlikely. It's so, so many years ago. How many times has that retaining wall been done? Well, this Not that one. This is the this other is the half. Other one. Oh, so okay. we made them rebuild one half, we did. and we didn't make them rebuild the other half. Mm -hmm. And now the other half is built. Yeah, the other half is built. Mm -hmm. That's why I was surprised to see that. I say how it was that. built with finger tools. <laughs> mm -hmm. Anybody feel that we should take it out? No? No? Okay. Any other discussion on this one? Okay. Oh, actually, sorry. We should be. I'll make a motion to accept Article Five as written. A second. Second. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? This is zero. Zero. We should probably go back to Article Three and have somebody propose it and second. <laughs> you propose it and second. No, I can't do both. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I heard Peter. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, do you, who wants to do this one? Uh, I think you're done with town meeting. That's um, that is the capital plan, which we've seen. Wow. Wow. Um, That's if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, I sure <laughs> no, it was. Town meeting was all the time. Please stick around for all the zoning fun. Oh, yeah. Not to mention some other things that might even be more fun. On page 15, um, this is under your new policy, if you will. We're asking you to declare some more things as surplus. You can see that um, three of the items we don't really know. It's three or four thousand dollars. They just say less than five thousand. If anything came back over five thousand, uh, well, in theory, you're saying the town meeting is now ten thousand. So I guess 
if it came back to 5,000, it'd be okay. You right, so now the policy is just we look. The policy is now that FinCom looks up to 10,000, but I would caution you as we get closer to 10, That's just right. to leave it for town right. meeting. Right. And again, we're normally, except for the time you, you just went through, we're asking for stuff in advance of something that's either on the capital plan, you can see the bottom things are just wrapped. Okay. And some of these things are really small, you know, the drill press for $500, but someone has to declare. So this is for us to take a, a, a vote on? If you would, yeah. It forward, it mm -hmm. doesn't go to town meeting because we're well Right. Up. And if anything came in at 12,000, then just say, all right, forget it. We didn't really get the authority we need. We have to go to town meeting. Right. That would be a good problem. Yes, please. At all. Any comments on this guy? Look, all right. Um, so do we need to take do it as a motion yeah. as well? Yeah. Okay. So we want to make a motion to move. Um, move to declare all items listed on page 15 as surplus. Second. Further discussion? No. All those in favor? Six zero zero. Yeah, I was thinking how you know you reorganized and how like purchasing more centralized and so on, right? Yeah. Um, do you have an expert to get rid of a bunch of stuff? <laughs> um, you know, in, as part of your investigation, if you will, you definitely want to talk to our procurement person, Jane Kinsella. Yeah. Um, you know, in addition to Sharon, and she, she can give you soup to nuts of what's changed, what hasn't changed, what we do. Um, I will just say one thing, I don't mind saying this in public, that we can't forbid unions from bidding on equipment. The Lights Department could. So our employees can bid on equipment. I should, I should add, we can't forbid them without collectively bargaining. They can do it without collectively bargaining. So just keep that in mind. So we do allow employees to bid on things, and occasionally they buy things. You'll wear all kinds of things through. Mm -hmm. um, the, the general method that we dispose of things, and you'll hear this from Jane, is we try to swap it against something we're buying. You know, trade it. That's the simplest. Um, if we don't think we're getting a good deal or that's not available, the next best choice is electronic. You can sell stuff on websites now. It's anonymous. We don't even know who we buying them sometimes. Better than, and I don't mean necessarily Craigslist, I mean the state organized. We'll know no more than we know right now today. So it'll have to, in my opinion, be a pretty strong probable savings, you know, from all the RFP results for that to be a good choice. And then if that's not selected, we'll meet on December 4th and, and do our best to select the GIC, non GIC plan. That, that could also plan design changes and price changes next July 1st. One of the issues with joining the GIC, not that we absolutely won't, but um, we will have no idea what we're signing up for on December 1st. We'll know no more than we know right now today. So it'll have to, in my opinion, be a pretty strong probable savings, you know, from all the RFP results for that to be a good choice. And then if that's not selected, we'll meet on December 4th and, and do our best to select the GIC, non-GIC plan. That, that could also entail a second meeting, so it's not that I would necessarily know for your first meeting in December, which is just after that. But that gives you an idea. This is obviously a pretty big deal for the cost side of our budget. And the nice thing is that this is a real tough time frame for some of the insurance carriers to meet. The bad part is hopefully it doesn't cost us a lot to get bids early. The good part is for both of our budget processes, we'll know. Um, here's a little discussion quickly about energy prices and the pipeline Sorry, capacity. Can I go back just a little? I'm just yeah. trying to understand on that um, healthcare stuff. So with an RFP, are you sort of modeling what you're looking for? What kind of um, yeah, variables? We, we've asked. We've asked for a plan that would look like the one we have. Every, first of all, every insurance carrier knows everything about everyone. Yeah. So we've sent out all kinds of demographic data, statistical data. They all have that available. Um, We've asked them specifically for a couple of plan designs, one that's pretty much what we have, and then some other options that would save money. Mm -hmm. So if they can offer all those, they'll respond. Maybe some of them can't. They'll at least offer what the closest they can to what we have now. They can't all match exactly. And then they'll, they're, 
there's a section that says if you have any, if you have any create, there's a couple others, and then there's a section if you have any creative ideas of ways we could reduce what you just showed us. Let us know. What we're finding, in, especially in the last year, is that all the gimmicks and tricks from a few years ago about you know if you just change your operating room co-payment or ER co-payment rather from 50 to 100, let's say you save a quarter of a percent. That's pretty much all out the window because it's so uncertain in the industry right now. No one knows what the price. You know the actuaries are having a nightmare. Just follow Paul's point for a second in yep. the plan designs. So. I'm assuming are they looking at HMO as an option as well as PPO? Or we HMO? have both. Okay. And then what size deductibles are they looking at? Um, I don't have a list in my head. Uh, ours are higher than most by far. But the one thing we don't do is to have, um, I forget what the term is, but the first thousand bucks on you. Right. The first 500 bucks is on you, whatever it is. We don't have plans like that. Maya doesn't offer those, but we've asked. Because that's really what all the companies going to the yeah. high deductibles. Yeah, and then, you, and then you get the healthcare savings account versus right. I don't know if you have flexible savings account. We do. The healthcare savings account is so much more flexible. Yeah. And I don't know if like a public entity can say, here's your healthcare, and oh by the way, we're going to start by putting a eight hundred dollars in that. You know, that's that's something account. that would be negotiated, but okay. all those ideas are absolutely on the table. Yeah, because. Yeah. Because you're right, it is much more flexible now. It didn't used to be as interesting. That that right, and when and when the more. company or the town can say, oh, by the way, we'll put we'll put the seed money in your healthcare savings account, then people don't feel so exposed for the yep. deductible. And the high deductible versus low deductible, the Huge premiums savings. are hugely different. Huge. Like yeah. More than if you just take twelve times the difference. I mean, you, you how can it yeah. be? It doesn't right. make sense, but yeah. it is. That's the one thing we found that is a lever is that. Mm -hmm. All the other little tricks we used yeah. to have pretty much are worthless now. And so many companies are only offering that now, but financially, yeah. when you do the analysis, you realize at first you panic, and then you realize, okay, do the analysis between what they give us, and yeah. it's very viable. Even Meyer realizes they have to go in that direction. This concept is very foreign to the public market, for what that's worth. Mm -hmm. The public market doesn't usually lead the way on anything like it's this. too bad. So yeah. But the private sector has clearly shown there's big savings. Some of the things we did years ago, that seemed to be such a small change saved an enormous amount on a premium because it was meant to change behavior. So don't go to the emergency room when you have a cold. Mm -hmm. Well, we the high 50, deductible plan forces We went from 50 to 150, right. yeah. and maybe you go to the emergency or the, the ER for fifty dollars, but for 150, maybe you stay home. Right. So or you go to CVS. <laughs> yeah. Right. And they give you a cold one more day before you go into the yeah. doctor. And guess what? You get that. Yeah. Um, probably nothing here we really need to do. I will say the school department is still evaluating this situation as well as energy costs, so you might see some changes uh, by the end of the month. Um, what does all this look like? Again, if we don't use any free cash in the next couple of years, your operating budgets would have to come down 2% and then crawl up that 0.8% in the second year. What if we use 1.7? And this is pretty much in line with the numbers we talked about when we were over at Coolidge. It's about 1% each year. Not much has really changed. And then lastly, what if we were targeting 3.5%, which has generally been what the operating budgets have been for the last three years. And I think both John and I would agree that doesn't always do all the things we want by any stretch. That's how much free cash should be used. And note, as is clear in the example, you'll be building the reliability on it, which is the hard part. You know, if, if in the third year you're kind of back to something that was normal, no big deal, you could do this. And if that's when the uh, override quote unquote happens, and you knew it was going to happen, you could do this. Kind of tough to do it otherwise, though. So this is the annual question. You know, we have a million dollar gap between our accommodated costs and our revenues. What do you do? Well, you know, <clears throat> I've been wrong for so long. I'm, tired of being wrong. I'll just be quiet from now on. <laughs> yes, I hate that, that already. Um, you know, one option is to just lean on those revenues even more than Sharon just described to you. Since we don't always know the sources of the revenue, but something good always happens, right? And it, and it usually does. You know, 80% of the time something good happens. Let's and we've got our rainy day account if do. it doesn't happen. So we do. But don't do both. <laughs> um, the, the next part is um, the selectmen have uh, a program called Reading 2020, and, and one of the strategic planning efforts 
um, that's been subject of six executive sessions so far is things that are going to lead to more revenues. So we'll talk about that when we can. It's not going to happen in the next year or two, though. It's designed to be long-term stuff. Um, and just as sort of some benchmarks, you know, if, if we were to uh, you know, land a, a big project in town, 70 million of new development only gets you, if you will, a million property taxes. Plus, we do get some one-time fees. But just to put that in perspective, a million bucks is 1.2 percent. Yep. Yep. It's um, two percent on the operating budgets. Right. Two percent on operating and one point twenty. Yeah. So yeah. that'd be great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But seventy million. Yeah. Can you say that again? So one million is so on the operating. So we got a million in property 2%. taxes. That's two percent. We could go from where we are to where yeah. the three and a half is yeah. pretty easily. And I thought it, this would be a good example of those of you that have been around a while. Well, remember the old Johnson Hardware, and then obviously the Atlantic. Um, that whole area has been redeveloped pretty significantly, and that's only a quarter of a million. So it's not easy to get that million dollars. It's a nice idea, though. And you know, obviously, when you drive around, Reading doesn't have a whole lot of empty space. So a seventy million dollar project wouldn't be done in a year. Uh, no. And I'm only doing 70 because that's what the million is. Yes. I don't have anything in mind to say. <laughs> I don't think that'll be that much. Um, so, you know, if you want to increase revenues, here's some of the issues. Um, you know, what's state aid going to do? I don't know. You know, this, we talked to the state reps and the senator when they were here last time. Um, this bottom line is pretty concerning. And that's why I asked him the question. Um, you know, the casino vote absolutely does have an influence over revenues, for, for better or worse, whether you like it or you don't. It just does. They'll be in a better position. Revenues are running good this year, slightly above their 5% projections, but it's way too early in the year to really make any sense of that. Um, so you just don't know what to do with state aid. I think putting in a plus 2.5 right now is pretty risky. After the election, if the casino vote is not repealed, I won't feel as bad about the two and a half, and it's hard to, it's hard to get comfortable saying it should be higher since it's been a while since we had lunch. Yeah. I was just going to say, the other X factor with that is the Chapter 70 funding formula, yeah. but that's a year away, okay. um, from at least a year away from getting revised. Because mm -hmm. is that something that Senator Lewis... still in the committee? Yeah. yeah, it just started. Okay. The committee just started. just started. Yeah. Okay. They're not supposed to report out until June. Okay. So right, so the formula is really yeah, tweaked every year, down, too. They right, have these yeah. different yeah. levels they yeah. pulled. Or it's not really, like, there's sort of a myth almost yeah. about the they formula because exactly it's formula. not the same every year. But even the casino money probably wouldn't be available next year. Probably not. Though. So they had but zero they in this year as an assumption, but they do have it in the next year. Right. I was a little surprised. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um, prop 10, two and a half. Ten and a half. That'd be the ten. <laughs> yeah, no problem. I don't think so. I can't imagine that challenge. <laughs> I look at other states' budgets sometimes, or other cities and towns, and I constantly see six, seven, and eight percent increases every year in the Midwest. It's just unbelievable. Uh, anyways, New York State. If you, you know, if you're aiming for an override, and you're going to do it every ten years, where well, first of all we're a couple years behind, and secondly, you don't want to have taxpayer burnout, so you're going to ask for a lot of money. It's going to sink and swim, but it's you know if you ask for four million or six million, I think the answer is the same. So you just got to ask. Mm -hmm. How much you use and how fast you use, that's different. You know, and that's something we can we can phase it in. We can have some kind of strategy of you know it's going to take a lot of communication. Um, but the one thing that I'd like to see happen is if we do have a successful override, I think you should stop using free cash to balance the budgets. That should be part of the deal. If we keep coming in with another million dollars every year, we ought to be spending it on one-time costs. Because believe me, we could do that. Uh, we could spend a million dollars on roads and you know, a lot of effort. See, I don't know that I agree with that. You don't know. Yeah, well, because <laughs> but if we, we keep showing that we're, you know, able to replenish and putting money back. Yeah. So it's working, and I just I can't imagine, and especially in the beginning. Beginning years is one thing, but towards the end of that tenure, um, you, you yeah. usually don't have that luxury. The other thing is, I won't speak for the schools, John can, but on the town side, um, we really, it's, it's kind of an obsession that we hate to spend money, and mm -hmm. it's not actually good for the place. Mm -hmm. 
you saw how much we turned back four or five hundred thousand. Yeah. You know, we have an, a lot of empty jobs, honestly. We're not putting out a better product because the jobs are empty. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure you with that. But we're so worried about, well, why hire someone and then have to lay someone off? And that's just constant fear. Now, that's no way to live. Maybe we should just not worry about it. So you really think that's how you're living and not filling a position because you think they're going to try I, I guarantee you I'm leaving some positions open for that reason. Um, the position, the um, we have a department head position open that I've been doing, which is ridiculous. Um, that's a job we have to fill and we will fill in the next year. But other positions that are empty will probably stay empty, at least in, through the winter, when we have a better idea of what did health insurance look like, you know, what's going on. Um, we just have a hard time sort of spending money sometimes because we know this is a constant, always issue. Now, if an override happened and we suddenly assessed the full six million, I'm not sure we'd be able to mentally change very much, but there's so many things that the town would like to do because we think the residents want them. It'd be interesting to try instead of always being in such a defensive position and saying, oh, right, we, can't we, do, we can't do it, we can't do it, we can't do it. Being in that defensive it. position, for We're taking out. Years. You know what I mean? Like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but, but the other thought is that maybe what we want to do is, is kind of buckle down tight and then have kind of a kitty of funds that are used for both sustainable as well as one time projects that are high priorities to the overall taxpayers, whatever yeah. that happens to be. And literally, they, you know, you set priorities, maybe they, they get voted through, whatever, and those are the things that get the extra funding. And because otherwise, I don't, I don't know where you really go. I mean, how do you, how do you start saying, you know, what, you know, you know, should everybody get the same amount going up? You know, another no, issue think so. that I've been wrestling with is in the past, we've always had a lot of employees, very little non-employee wages. Or mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It'd be a lot more flexible if we had more right. contract help, exactly. seasonal help, whatever right. you want to call it. Um, and then when we have money, we can do things. When we don't have money, you know, we don't have unemployment and, Right. You know, we don't have the benefit costs along the way. So maybe this, you know, I'm looking at a couple of areas where maybe that model is better. Mm -hmm. I don't know that John's going to have that same model. No, he has, a whole <laughs> <different> <laughs> yeah. he has a whole different set of yeah. <laughs> optional fourth grade. But it, but it does give you more flexibility, the contracted. Yeah. Even I'll, I'll just give you an example. We have a relatively large engineering staff because in the long run, that's the cheapest way to do it. Um, we don't, we, we spend money on the town side for a lot of capital projects on their wages. Other cities and towns spend one and a half times as much through capital to do the same work, which is the right model. Mm -hmm. if, if you're really busy and we hired a lot of engineers to staff up and then you get into really not busy, that was a bad idea. So, you know, we're okay staffed right now, but I certainly wouldn't want to get higher if, we're, if, if we had more work. I'd want to start pushing some of those costs of doing that work into the capital. Yeah. Right, and that's very logical. That's yeah, a great correct. example. Yeah. Right, because so much of their work is probably related to capital projects, right? Absolutely. So it's yeah. hand in hand. Because yep. I think those are the opportunities we have to look for is what are those opportunities that could come out of one time kind of? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, reduced costs, well, health insurance, you know, I don't know. I just thought it'd be useful. It's 1% reduction in premiums, about 100000 So. You know, we're not going to be saving a huge amount of money. And then you've talked in the past about reducing uh, effectively capital spending because debt is debt. And just to give you a number, uh, if you've reduced it a quarter of a percent, that's about 200000 a year. Um, and I don't have any problem with you doing that over this two-year period, but I'd ask you not to change your policy. Let's just have an informal agreement because I think the policy has really been helpful. Um, but I think, you know, John and I have talked a little about it. And, you know, as we talk about capital projects, we want a lot of money. And then we talk about the equity budgets, we don't want as much capital. It's an impossible yeah. equation to solve because we have needs on both sides. But if you shifted your model as you were just speaking, then we'd want to think about that because that's where we could take Yeah, I mean, you know, if, if for instance, yeah. again, we knew there was some help down the road and we really needed some help in the short run, there's an easy couple hundred or four hundred thousand, you know, for one or two years. And that's. That's the financial form. Questions on that side? Comments? Uh, <laughs> it's looked worse. Well, it, 
it, it just looked better. Yeah, it's an issue of how to deal with it. Um, I asked John also, and I want to give John a chance um, to take a look at um, and help us understand the different accounts that we have to work with so that we understand um, you know, the same way that we have some, and the town has some stabilization funds and other activities. How does it work on the school side? Okay. And is there anything there? What, what do we need to understand so that we can kind of see what, what's happening? It's, it's two pages. So oh, it's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, so the, the longer piece of paper comes from the DOR. Um, we did not create this one, the DOR. Um, it, it lists the um, revolving funds that school departments can have. Uh, we don't have stabilization funds, we don't have reserve funds. We have uh, some revolving accounts. Essentially what a revolving fund is, a revolving account is, the money that goes in has to be used for the purpose of the account. So, for example, full-day kindergarten tuition. Uh, when we charge uh, a family $4,200 for full-day kindergarten, that money has to be used for the additional time that they are in the full-day program, not the half-day piece of the full-day program, because all students get that half-day piece. Um, so we can, we can only use um, a certain amount, and, and the fee is related to the expenses that we can charge to the account. That's how you come up with the 4,200. Um, so it certainly would be the staffing for the second half of the day, uh, paraeducator support, uh, curriculum materials, um, furniture if you need it, um, those, some uh, pieces of uh, principal salary, uh, assistant superintendent salary, things like that. That's how you come up with that 4,200. Um, and the amount you want to keep in that fund, is there a philosophy for each account or is there a general philosophy that you say, well, I want to keep half the amount of the revenue we expect in the year or so the the goal of several years ago when um when, when pat scatine was superintendent is you try to have a year's yes, worth in case you, yeah. you reach difficult times then you know you you have a year cushion um in some revolving accounts we have been able to do that in others we have not been able to do that um there are some revolving accounts we've had to increase the offset uh, depending on the needs and in others um, we haven't done it as much so you'll you'll see and that's what this second um, document is this is a list of all of our revolving funds um, you can see the history since uh, June 30th 2011 with the balances and then the balance as of June 30th 2014 and then what we have for the offset um, for the FY15 budget. Um, so essentially, if you want to know approximately how much will be left, assuming everything works the way it does on the spreadsheet, for on June 30th, 2015, you would take the balance on June 30th, 2014 and subtract it from the offset. <clears throat> um, there's a couple of factors here I wanted to point out. Um, to you. The first one is the extended day program. Um, that That's more of a self system. We do have a small offset um, to our operating budget and that's for more administrative costs, secretarial costs. They don't have any, um, any uh, you know, secretarial help. Um, so that, that fund, the, all of the, the personnel costs would come directly out of that revolving account. So you wouldn't see that that's why that number is, is, is so small, even though you have a large balance there. Um, the special education, I'm sorry, I don't have my glasses on. Yeah, that one's one up from the bottom. Um, the special education tuition account, you notice right now, is fairly high. Um, however, and that's the account where we bring in out of district placements. And we've actually been pretty successful the last couple of years bringing in more students from surrounding communities. Um, and that's why you see a larger balance there on June 30th. However, you're going to see also the offset is larger because we are going to be charging, a lot of the students will come 
uh, with one-to-one -one paraeducators. Um, so we're not charging those to the operating budget, we're charging it to this account. So you'll see that a larger offset um, will bring that balance further down. Um, full day kindergarten, one thing I want to caution about the full day kindergarten, which you know, is, is something the school committee is gonna start discussing on October 20th, is do we go back to a lottery system? If we go back to a lottery system, it is going to have an effect on what this revolving account is going to look like because that's less revenue coming in. And that means that the budget for FY16 will have to be adjusted accordingly as well, which could mean a decrease um, in the offset that's coming in for that we use right now. So that those are some factors that, um, you know, and that discussion is going to start happening on October 20th. Ideally, what we wanted to do, if, if we were on a, a plan to go to full-day kindergarten for all students in a couple of years, we were trying to build up that account so that that, that year that we don't, uh, the rollover year, uh, we could use as much, clean out the revolving fund so that, that we wouldn't have to use any you know, additional uh, operating money. But um, you know, as you can see, I don't know if that's going to be possible. Why are, there, why are there big swings in the, the gainer loss? Like, I, we look at the RISE program, for example. You have a, in 12, you, we had a deficit, and then you have a big surplus in, in 13, and then we're back down to, you know, just a small, small amount in 14. Like, what's, what's causing the ups and downs in the, in the revenue? Can, like, what's... With RISE, a lot of it's based on student need um, okay. and the amount of, because RISE is an integrated program, right. so you're, your revenue is, is the regular days, the, the regular ed students, the ones that are not on IEPs, they pay the tuition. Okay. Special education students do not pay tuition. So if you have a larger special education population, that requires more staffing, um, more needs. If they're, if they're, yep. So that, that's why you see a lot of fluctuation. Okay. <clears throat> I don't know if that answered the questions you were. Yeah, I think structurally it definitely answered the questions in terms of how these are set up, at least from, from what yeah. I was hoping up. But we, uh, you know, because a question has come up, questions have come up, well, we cannot use the funds from these revolving accounts for other areas that they weren't not meant for. So we, we couldn't take, for example, for full day kindergarten tuition, if we had a surplus, we couldn't take that and put it towards, um, you know, a, a position at the high school or something like that. It would, legally, we couldn't do that. And this also explains the issue of, um, as we talked about full day K, and shifted from the current tuition system to a reimbursed system that would be a year behind? Yes, but then the year after, because it's based on the October 1 enrollments, and so then your, your Chapter 70 is a, would be a year later. Um, and then once the Chapter 70 kicks in, though, we would see an increase in Chapter 70 funding. Right. And for example, this past year, we had 300, well, currently we have 322 students uh, in kindergarten, and if all of them were tuition free and they were full day, um, we would be getting approximately 1.1 million dollars more in Chapter 70 funding, which would increase your um, revenue. Any other questions, guys? Okay. Thank you. This is the first time I've, I've kind of seen this, so I right. very much appreciate it. And, and this, this should help you. Um, this, this chart from DOR is pretty helpful in what the purpose. We don't have all of the revolving accounts that are uh, listed here, um, but I think it gives you a, an understanding of. So, John, just go back to what you just said, what you would have expected increase on um, the state funding. So you would have expected 1.1 if we had full day K for that number of kids? Versus we took in 700? Yes, so we would see an increase in chapter 75, yes. Right, and more than what we were getting for. Yes, tuition. that's correct. Oh, that, that's possible. Yeah. One of the, when I, when I went to the forum with Senator Lewis, they said one of the ways that you it can increase your chapter 70 funding is bringing more students. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's like, yeah, thanks, thanks a lot. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to do mezzanines now, right? Yes. <laughs> So this is a way you can do that. Another way you can do it is with preschool, because now preschool is part of the Chapter 70 funding, mm -hmm. which was, that was passed this year. 
Can I, are you, I mean, given that, that discussion and, and what Senator Lewis said, kind of all those things, are you comfortable that we kind of figured out, given the way the state's playing the game right now, how to get as much as we can from each of the pieces? At least what the levers are, and then you guys can make With decisions. With the current formula? Yeah, with, with any of the current activities, you know, I know we take advantage of, of, of a lot of the programs, which is great. Are there, are there other ones, I mean, that's one that was kind of a, I guess, an aha, uh -huh, and well, not an uh -huh, we kind of know, but you get more money out of it if you do it that way. And as right. you think about, um, you know, town meeting, and now they're thinking about the whole school thing, you know, everybody already decided it was going to cost more um, on the operating side and didn't necessarily accept that there's actually, no, it's going to be the opposite. Or it didn't make enough sense to people that right. they could say, how could that happen? It just doesn't work. Where else can we look for that? And, and who can help us with that? I mean, is, it, is it Jason Lewis? Is he the guy who can help us? I, I'm, I'm, I'm so trying to find where, where else are the things where, where they say, you know what you ought to do is on your school lunch program, you should be offering uh, two kinds of salads because there's a, an extra yeah. premium you get if you have a second <laughs> kind of salad. <laughs> I don't know if this is school for Yeah, that's probably example. not the one you want to use. <laughs> it's on the yeah. top of the With all the <laughs> that's, laws. That's the one that has the most restrictions on it, too, yeah. in terms of what you all can right, have for an ending balance, one, too. <laughs> so, and the kids are already ready to work. You know, you yeah. can always, yes, and, and, and you know, this is certainly a school committee discussion, that you can always look at trying to raise user fees, but that, uh, you know, I don't know if you want to go in that direction because... Yeah, I'm looking You're talking about how you get more state money. Oh, state, state money. money. Yeah. State where, where are there state money opportunities that we can learn um, more about? You, you know, know one, that's for all of us. Yeah, it, I mean, most of un, you know most of our grant funding is federal. Mm -hmm. You know, and, yeah. and the three grants that we just mm -hmm. received, town and schools, really? is a fe, uh, federal grants. Mm -hmm. um, one thing we talked about today, and I, I don't know if we get a lot from it, but it's something we've never tapped into. Um, but it's I think it's something it's time to look into it as E-rate. Um, E-rate is uh, when you, there's, a, there's an amount of money you pay in your phone bill that says a universal charge or something like yeah. that. Um, that goes towards funding for schools uh, and libraries for uh, technology mo and t uh, telecommunications. It, it probably wouldn't, and it's, a lot of it's based on um, the poverty index of a community. Um, so we wouldn't see large amounts of funding from that, but we probably could get ten to fifteen thousand um, dollars for telecommunications if we were purchasing um, some some infrastructure hardware in, in a year. So it's a it's a re and they have doubled the E rate for next year. The federal um, government doubled the rate, um, the amount of money available to four billion dollars. And they've changed. They've changed some of the formulas. So it, it is something that I think we can look at. It's just not. It, we're not going to get a lot out of it. But I, I would think that working closely with our state legislators is a good way to impact the the formula. I mean, they have a direct line to the Ways and Means chairs and staff. Um, and I would probably. I know the presentation said like, oh, state aid is completely unpredictable. But I would. Like, I know that it's part of the conversation. They're, they always talk about holding communities harmless. So at least you're supposed to get what you got last year, whereas other um, line items within the state budget, people are coming like begging to be level funded because they don't want to go down from the previous year. But I feel like communities generally at least get what they got the previous year. But, we're, but like we were saying before, the levels are always and the and the um, knobs are turned in different ways every year. So, but but I do think that legislators have if they if they take the time to really understand those levers, they really do have an opportunity to um, advocate for their communities and how they can be turned in a way that is beneficial for them. And um, what's the level to to influence them? Is it is it town manager? Is it school committee? Is it selectmen? Is it all of the above? Voters? I, yeah. Voters. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, can we get a letter writing campaign going? Couldn't hurt. I know it's a big number, so a little swing. So, we might not go under, but there's a big difference between level funded and 2.5%, 3%. Oh, yeah. Big number. So Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, maybe you should probably think about what we can do to influence them, I guess. Cool. Okay. Questions, comments? And I mean, maybe actually the Foundation Budget Review Commission is Foundation some. 
which is looking at chapter seven. the chapter, chapter seven. Oh, okay. It, it's it just yeah. started and it's supposed to have a report by the by June. And so maybe, yeah. and I don't know if they're going to be doing any kind of public hearings or they something. Are. They are going to do so or across the state. So maybe, I I mean maybe we need to look at it more closely. Um, but maybe we send someone to testify. Well, I know that there's a, a member from the school committee on the board. There's also a member from my, oh, okay. from my professional organization, yeah. MASBO, is mm -hmm. also a member of the committee because obviously the school business officials are very concerned and interested in the outcome of this uh, debate yeah. and discussion. So, no, um, I'm from, from the NASC. Uh, I think it's my future. <laughs> Every little bit helps. So, so they're, are they looking at not only the, um, they're not only looking at the formula, but what the foundation budget really is, because the foundation budget is always like a way less than what it actually re requires to operate. Yeah, they're the zero. You know, it's yes. they're supposed to provide a certain percentage of the foundation budget to schools, but of course they're all operating at way more than what the foundation, foundation budget, budget really is. is yes. So. So is the so are they look is the I, I'm not entirely sure is the commission looking at both what the foundation budget level should be as well as what the formula should be is it like a two part yeah they're looking yeah. you know because all of the costs are based on 1993 right and you know health They're insurance right, yeah, yeah. special education costs things mm -hmm. like that haven't really <coughs> gone up with inflation when they use the formula okay. so though they're looking at the, those things okay. well, just as an outsider correct me if I'm wrong, but one of the issues seems to be the great majority of cities only spend the foundation budget of they don't add extra taxes right. to it. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to start messing around with the formula, they're going to all need the most help first. So, right. so that's hard to believe that some communities can just spend some, the Some very nearby us yeah. that have city in front of them spend the minimum. And probably the state is funding most of their right. education costs. So, you know, all this might work out well for the state and communities as a whole, but for Reading, we're kind of towards the end of that benefit line, I'd say. Is course, there a concern that if the, if the formula becomes more equitable, Reading will do worse? I have that concern. Mm -hmm. yeah. That would be more equitable. <laughs> 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 for us, but, yeah. In some ways, it's a bluffing game. Okay, so um, next steps. Um, so this is a uh, great outline for form, um, a little bit of update. One of the things that FinCom is going to need to do soon is talk about the recommended use of free cash uh, for at least a year, maybe two, and kind of how we how we can see that structured and use that guidance information to go to all the groups so that they can start looking at what their budget is going to be and how, you know, where the priorities are and what's going to happen and see where we have mismatches. So I guess from my perspective, um, there was a lot of good news here. So we were, you know, a year ago we thought we were you know, going to be sucking down free cash dramatically. It turns out it grew. Maybe that's what we should spend more. I'm the only one that thought that you can say that. Like you think about everything will be fine. Yeah. Yeah, but, but bottom line is even if we you know took all the free cash out of the system over yeah. the next couple of years, you know, the budgets are up about three percent, three and a half percent max and not sustainable. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's you know, maybe it's a short term solution, it's most certainly not a long term solution. So I think that again, my perspective for discussion, um, you know, we still are in a situation where if we're gonna fund the priorities of the town as they're laid out today. Uh, we're going to need to look at how to responsibly use that cash, and at some point, it, it's going to take some kind of an operating override restructure to allow us to not shrink. I don't know how everybody else feels about that. Maybe. Any feedback on that comment? Can you do some more sensitivity analysis that you had up there about adding different levels of 